Hello students, I am here to discuss about the question paper dated 22nd, 3rd, 2020. This is for unit test 1 and the subject is zoology. So, let us start with the question number 136. It is a match the following type of question where in column 1 they have given us about the scientist name and in column 2 what they are related with. So, in column 1 A Tansley is a person who has given us the term ecosystem. Ramdeo Mishra is the father of ecology in India. Rita gave the term ecology and Ernst Haeckel is the person who has correctly defined ecology. So, thus the second option correctly matches. So, that is your answer. Moving on to question number 137, we have to identify the different biomes A, B, C and D which are marked here. This is directly a question from the diagram given in NCRT textbook class 12 and we can see over here that A is a desert biome, B is a grassland, C a temperate forest and D is a coniferous forest. So, the second option correctly matches that. Question number 138, read the following statements and as we can see here we have to see which of the above statements are correct. Going back to the statements, the temperature ranges from sub zero in polar areas and high altitudes to more than 50 degrees centigrade in tropical deserts. That is obviously a correct statement. In thermal springs and deep sea hydrothermal vents, temperature excretes 100 degrees centigrade. That is also true. Mango trees can grow in Canada and Germany. Now, that is incorrect. They cannot grow in the cold countries. Tuna fish are easily available in the tropical latitudes in the ocean. Of course, that is true again. Snow leopards are not found in Kerala forest. Yes, obviously, they are found only in the cold regions. So, the correct statements here will be 1, 2, 4 and 5. So, fourth option is right. Question number 139, identify the types of organisms marked as A, B and C on the basis of response of organisms towards the fluctuating environmental conditions. Now, you can see the graph in a question paper. You can see that line A is referring to confirmers. So, obviously, 99 percent of the animals and nearly all plants as we know are confirmers. Similarly, if you see the line B, it is for regulators, which is applicable for mammals and birds. Whereas, line C indicates partial regulators which sets or correctly matches with camels. So, the first option over there is correct. Question number 140, read the following statements. The first statement over here, success of mammals on earth is mainly due to their ability to maintain a constant body temperature and that is obviously a correct statement. Statement 2, most animals are homeotherms that is incorrect, most of them are poikilotherms, only birds and mammals are homeotherms. Diapause is a stage of suspended development in many zooplanktons, that is a correct statement again. Most of the animals can maintain internal homeostasis is wrong because they are not regulators. In confirmers, the body temperature changes with the ambient temperature is right, but the osmotic concentration of the body fluids does not change which that of the ambient water osmotic concentration is incorrect. So, overall the statement becomes incorrect. So, the statements which are correct among the above given ones will be 1 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 141, how does a kangaroo rat cope with a North American desert environment? First statement, water requirement is met by internal oxidation of stored fat is true. It can concentrate its urine, yes, because it has long loops of Henle in its kidneys. Minimum water is used to remove excretory products, obviously true. So, all of the above will be the correct answer, option 4. Question number 142, which is not the limitation of the ecological pyramid. 
experiment does not take into account the same species belonging to two or more trophic levels. Obviously, that is a limitation. Pyramids assumes a simple food chain something that almost never exists in nature. Correct again. Third statement, pyramids accommodate a food web. As you know, they do not. So, that is not coming under a correct statement for limitations. So, that is your answer. The fourth statement in the same question, saprophytes are not given any place in ecological pyramids even though they play a vital role in the ecosystem is again a limitation. Moving on to question number 143, you can see in your paper, it is the eight pyramids given here from which you have to choose the correct option. The pyramid A you can clearly see is that of an expanding population. Pyramid B is that of a stable population, it is a stable pyramid. And pyramid C is that of a declining one, a declining population. So, third option is right over there. Question number 144, a small problem here. If there are 50 drosophila in the lab and 3 of these died in a week, then the per capita death. Now, here is asking per capita death. So, obviously, it will be the number of deaths divided by the total number of individuals. So, 3 by 50, the answer will be 0 0.06 individuals per drosophila per week. So, the first answer is fine over there. Moving on to question number 145, which of the following best describes resource partitioning? The first option, slight variations in niche that allows similar species to coexist. Yes, because remember no two species can occupy the same niche. So, they can be a sharing of the food resources provided they are not limited. Second statement, a climax community that is reached when no new niches are available, not related obviously. Competitive exclusion that results in the success of superior species that is also not related to resource partitioning because that clearly states competition. Two species that can co-evolve to share identical niches. As already stated, they can never share the same niche. Moving on to question number 146. Which statement best describes the evolutionary significance of mutualism? The first statement, mutualism offers more diversity to a community that is not necessarily so. Second statement, interaction increases the survival and reproductive rates of the mutualistic species is a correct statement. Third statement, mutualistic interactions lessens competition in communities where it is present that is again not a correct option. The fourth statement, mutualism allows organisms to synthesize and use energy more efficiently that is again not always. Moving on to question number 147, which of the following would necessarily decrease the density of a population in a given habitat? The first option, natality that is birth rate is more than mortality that is death rate. Obviously, that would be increasing and not decreasing the population density. The second option, immigration more than emigration would also increase the population. The third option, mortality and emigration, both cause removal of organisms from the population, hence the density decreases. So, that is your correct answer. The fourth one, natality and emigration both contribute to an increase. Moving on to question number 148, it is a match the following type of question here. In the first column, are the organisms and the second one are some feature which they exhibit. A bears exhibit hibernation, snails exhibit estivation, zooplankton exhibit diapause and seeds exhibit dormancy. So, option 4 is the correct one. 149 is again a match the following type of question. In the first column we have interactions and the second we have the examples. Predation, cactus and moth exemplify it. 
Commensalism is again exemplified by orchid and mango. Parasitism by cascuta on hedge plants and competition between balanus and catamalis the barnacles. So option 1 correctly matches. Moving on to question number 150. A biologist studied the population of rats in a barn. He found that the average natality was 250, the average mortality 240, immigration 20 and emigration 30. The net increase in population is here as we know it will be natality and immigration which contribute to an increase. So that is 250 plus 20 to 70. Similarly, mortality and emigration that is 240 and 30 again 270 which contribute to a loss. So obviously the net increase in the population will be 0 that is option 1. Moving on to question number 151, predation is important for the first one transfer of energy yes, second keeping the prey population under control is also right, third one maintaining species diversity also is right. So obviously the correct answer would be 4 all of these.